here's five melody patterns your favorite producers use to create emotion. Number one is the ostinato. Ostinato is just a complex word for the simplest form of melody. In order to make this, just go into Ableton or whatever DAW you have, right click and just go half a bar and create your MIDI clip there. Double click, open up your piano roll and activate the scale. Pick any one you want. I use this one. Right click, go for eighth notes, get your pencil tool and just pick some notes. Next thing you do, just, just repeat it. Surely that can't work, right? Surely that's too simple, right? It's not gonna be emotional at all. But wait, listen to when I bring some chords in. Now this works because it gives you something easily to latch onto. The faster you can connect to a song, the more impactful it's gonna be. If you don't believe me, Seven Lions himself used this in Porter Robinson. Like imagine playing out your first festival slot and you're ready to reveal a brand new song that your fans haven't heard yet. With a simple melody like this, you're guaranteed to make that song memorable. But wait, you can't seriously have all your melodies in a one bar pattern repeating over and over and over again and expect your audience to have that emotional connection. You're right. So if you want to add some variation to this, we move on to pattern number two. Ostinato sounds like it's a Pokemon. If we were to evolve it, it'd turn into Arpeggio. Meaning we keep the same principles as the Ostinato following the same rhythm and repetition, but instead of keeping it the same every bar, it follows the chord progression. Fact, an Arpeggio is just the chord, but being played one note at a time. But if you did that, let me show you, if you just throw an arpeggiator as melodies, they're a little bit too busy. So I have a bit of a different solution to avoid this. And that brings us to our actual number two pattern, not the arpeggio, but what I like to call the walk along. Now there's probably a fancy classical music term for this, but I'm currently unaware. See if you notice what I did in this clip here. As you can hear, it has a similar effect to the ostinato since it focuses on simplicity and repetition. But in this example, I follow kind of the rules of arpeggio where I make slight changes on every single chord, including this red one here for the transitionary chord. So you put these side by side, you notice that they basically have the same notes, but I've only changed these top notes since the chords change. The third phrase comes in, this green one here, same notes here like an uh, ostinato, but these ones go up. And then when it comes to that transitionary chord, that same note changes again. So it's kind of walking along <laughs> with the chord progression. So if you've got your ostinato and you're feeling like it needs a slight bit of variation, this will save you. Now this works by adding extra feeling since the note changes you make can either ascend or descend through the scale. And with melodic bass, you want the listener to follow the lead. And this modified arpeggio, the walk along, is a great way to do it. It immediately adds that uplifting feeling, depending on the notes you pick, which will take them on a journey. This melody pattern is also used a lot in trance, side trance, hard wave, but by changing the bottom note instead of the top note. You can hear this in songs like Arm & Hammer's or the brand new one for Millenniums. And if we got this far, you're thinking, damn Ash, why do you gotta do everything in eighth notes? Spoiler alert, you don't have to. 
pattern number three will show us the way. But before I talk about that, I know there's a song that you need to release. You're slacking, but wait, not before. You put some finishing touches on it. That's where today's sponsor, Mixia, comes in. You can put the finishing touches on your new song in minutes. You can get a customized and polished result that makes you confident to upload it and share it to the world. So how's it work? You just upload to Mixia and you can customize it by changing the intensity with the volume and the balance uh, with your EQ. An unlimited song previews of your mastered song and one free download if you try this now. Just upload, listen, customize, and download the finished track. And this only costs $8.25 a month or $99 a year. And I bet you're not even paying that much for Netflix. So instead of watching the new season of Too Hot to Handle, why not actually put the finishing touches on your song through Mixia? From there, you can head straight to the upload form on DistroKid and upload your newly mastered track. Thank you to Mixia and DistroKid for sponsoring this video. Oh, and by the way, since you're watching, you can get 7% off your first year of DistroKid using my link. It's in the description. Click that right now. Now let's go on to this melody pattern. Pattern number three will show us that we're not stuck only on eighth notes. So let's continue to build on what we have. So similar to our arpeggio or walk along, we are going to follow the chord progression to enhance its overall impact and give it movement. But we're gonna put more focus on the variations of the rhythms. That's right, I'm talking about the riff. Now, riffs are super popular in more guitar-based music, and the easiest definition is that they're just melodies, but are extremely iconic, impactful, even when they're played by themselves. They're literally found in all types of music. Think of Seven Nation Army, or even the Star Wars theme. But let's get back to emotional melodic bass. With lots of future bass artists incorporating guitar, you'll find riffs extremely popular as your melody for your drop. To make it a little easier, we're gonna start with our ostinato and just play around with the rhythms. So, rather than staying on the eighth here, I've actually swapped over to some 16th notes over here, and then just repeating that over and over, and that'll sound like... Notice how all I did was change some of the rhythms, but we can add a little bit more variation to that. So let's follow the ostinato rules, but also follow walk-along rules, where we change the melody a little bit every time a chord changes. Or even this one, where I keep the rhythms the same, where I incorporate call and response as the variation on each chord. <music> call and response is an entire video I could make, so subscribe so you don't miss that when I put it out. And here's another example of uh, rhythm changes and walk along. Now this takes a lot of practice, but making iconic and memorable riffs, your fans will be able to get that emotional connection to your song since they'll immediately recognize what they hear. What about songs that you recognize? Good things fall apart. Dumbo loop. And yes, of course, riffs are really tricky. They demand you to be iconic. And that's a lot of pressure if you're still learning as a producer. So to make this a little easier, let's move on to pattern number four. Now, this is a trick that I like to call top lining. It's basically a cheat code to write a riff as long as you have a vocalist or some kind of vocal because top lining is when you make your lead the exact same notes as whatever your vocalist has sung. And actually, this is a really great way to use up those splice vocals without sounding like everyone else, hint, hint. So let's say you find a vocal you really like, instead of just dragging and dropping it onto another track like this, no, no, 
you can create a new MIDI track and drag that onto the MIDI instead. You'll see this little musical note, let go, and just click on melody. And here's an example of what that could sound like in a song. The MIDI won't always be perfect when you drag and drop it in, but there should be enough notes to form something coherent. Or you could just copy it note by note by ear. Now, even though I've heard a lot of artists do this, I personally try to avoid it because going from hearing the vocal melody and then immediately going to the drop and hearing the exact same melody sounds a little cheesy to me. I say that as that is the trick I use for my Dabin remake. Whatever. I like adding variation for that spice. But if you need practice coming up with riffs and seeing how they work, this is a great way to start. And tons of songs use this, like Arm & Hammer's Son Holo. Dabbins. And speaking of hollow, you might be feeling a little bit of that with some of these melodies. So to expand on the lead, we move on to pattern number five. And I call this the stacker. Now, just cause I showed you all of these different techniques so far doesn't mean you're just stuck on using one. You can actually stack the different patterns we went over today to create harmonies and counter melodies. Let's try this with a melody that uses the walk along. So what you can do is open it up, select all your notes, make sure you've got scale doubly enabled, hold control, skip a note, drop it down there, and then hold shift and push down. That'll octave the third down for a really nice voicing. So you'll be going from this to Do you hear how much that adds? This works emotionally because we're adding depth to the melody itself. It's great for adding that second voice to your song or even a variation of your initial idea. That's not all. We can take this a step further. Rhythmically, this riff is super straightforward, so it would sound really good if we put an ostinato underneath. That's baby food. If you really want to push some feeling, don't just use the walk along. No. How about using a riff over top an ostinato? And instead of thirds, which have the potential to be a little harmonically dense, especially if you have thicker chords. You can use octaves as an alternative interval if you want to add that depth without it sounding too cheesy or clustered. And all of this creates an insane back and forth between layers that will imply even more weight and make your melodies even more profound. Meaning, audience cry every time. So now that you know all these tricks, how do you put them all together? How do you know when to add variation or keep it repetitive? Introducing a topic that I'll have to save for a whole other video. Do you have any melody patterns that you like or are inspired by? Let me know down below. Big shout out to everybody on Patreon. Your support allows me to keep making videos like this. Now go make some videos.